I love John Oliver, but why does he keep calling it a mobile home? Home of mobile home dwellers, mobile home, mobile homes, of mobile homes, mobile homes, mobile home. Just driving me crazy. This week I found myself with a lot of extra time being at home, like many of us have, and I came across this clip by John Oliver about manufactured homes. I know he calls them mobile homes, but they're manufactured homes. And although I agreed with a lot of things that he had to say, there were some things that I think that he's dead wrong about. So I want to go ahead and share this video with you. And then at the end, I would like to get your opinion of what you think about manufactured homes and how the industry is being run today. So let's go ahead and just start watching the show. Mobile homes, perfected by humans, but invented by snails. And as clever as he thinks that little one-liner is, that couldn't be further from the truth. The mobile home, or actually the manufactured home industry, has changed drastically since 1976. What people would consider a mobile home is not a mobile home at all, it's a manufactured home. And that just means that the home was built in a manufacturing plant. There's many types of homes that are built in manufacturing plants, including PMRVs, or what you would think of as a lot of tiny homes. Those are built to a different standard. Now, when you look at things like a manufactured home or a modular home, both of those are still made in manufacturing plants, but are built to completely different standards. Standards. So whenever somebody says a mobile home, they're referring to either a PMRV or an RV, which is built to a completely different standard. Now, when you're looking at a modular, that's built to the universal building standards. And when you're looking at a manufactured home, that is built to HUD manufactured standards. So make sure that you're always looking for the HUD manufacturing standards when you're looking at any manufactured home, if that's what you're looking for. It is true, it can be genuinely hard to tell the difference between manufactured homes and conventional homes. Sadly, back in the real world, the truth is... And that was a true statement he made. A lot of manufactured homes these days look just like a traditional built home. If you're concerned that the house might be a manufactured home or a traditional stick built home and you're about to purchase it, you could ask your real estate agent or even ask the owner themselves for their property disclosure. In that property disclosure, they have to disclose what kind of property it is, whether it's a manufactured home, if it's a modular home or a traditional stick built. The rise of big money investors in mobile homes has led to a corresponding spike in rents, fees and local news stories like these. People living in a local mobile home park outraged over the sharp increase in lot rent. Rents were raised by as much as 36%. Rents were raised by nearly 60%. Ella Karcher lives on a fixed income. Her lot rent's just gone up and it all adds up to a bill she can't afford. Now it's a matter of, okay, now which medication am I going to take in half so that I can make it stretch out a little bit longer. Now that is pure greed. And this is what I've always told every single person that has ever commented on any of my videos when it comes to manufactured homes. I never advise anybody to purchase a manufactured home without it being attached to a piece of land that they own themselves. If you're renting the piece of land underneath the property, at any point, the company that owns that land can raise your rent for the piece of land. With that being said, you can work with a lot of different parks that where you own the land underneath it, or you can rent to own, or even you can work with the person that owns the piece of land and see if you can have some kind of settlement over time. I know here in Louisiana, there's many people that own pieces of land that they will do a like rent to own, but you're gonna have to work with those owners themselves that actually own the piece of property to see how that's going to work for you. Sometimes they'll do it for like a couple years where you can rent it and then at the end of those couple years you're going to have to purchase the piece of land and every area is going to be a little bit different. So always work with an experienced real estate agent before you place your manufactured home on that piece of property. But I will say this and I will say it again and I hope that everybody's listening. If you are buying a manufactured home, please please make sure that you own the piece of land that you're attaching it to. And if you do not own the land that's underneath it, you're not gonna be able to work with a professional licensed real estate agent. I know in Louisiana you can't because it has to be attached to a piece of property. So that's, you're working with a completely different set of rules when it comes to resale of property if you do not own the land underneath it. The key difference between a mobile and a conventional home has nothing to do with pie. It has to do with how it retains its value. Just listen to finance guru Dave Ramsey give his no-nonsense take on whether or not you should buy one. 
mobile homes go down in value. It's the only thing you own that you live in that goes down in value. Even if you buy dirt under it that goes up in value more than it goes down in value, so it appears you didn't lose money, you lost money. You buy a $50,000 mobile home, in a few years it's a $10,000 mobile home. I mean, cars go down in value, mobile homes go down in value. It's a car you sleep in. Okay. And I've had this argument before, and many people are going to argue with me in the comment section. But I'm telling you, it, it depends on the area that you live in. If you live in an area that that happens where a manufactured home over a period of time is going to lose money, then that is equivalent to your area. But if you live in an area where the manufactured homes retain their value, that is completely different. And I know for a fact, in many areas, you can gain value. If you look in the comments section of many of my videos, people will say, I bought this manufactured home for 60,000. I live in such and such area and I gained $60,000 when I sold it. Do, do I believe that they probably would have sold it for a lot more if it was a house sitting there? Yes, but to say it absolutely gains no value over a period of time is a falsehood. Uh, just like anything, always check with your real estate professional, but don't put it as face value because Dave Ramsey says you'll gain no value. You're going to have to check with your local experts beforehand before you make that decision, especially if this is the best affordable option for you. So, so mobile homes may be a terrible investment for people buying them, but they've been an incredible investment for Warren Buffett. Clayton Homes generated pre-tax earnings of $911 million last year. And they've done that not just by selling homes, but by financing them as well. Because instead of being financed with mortgages, mobile homes tend to be bought with high interest, shorter term, chattel loans. The kind you'd use to buy a car or a TV. And an investigation a few years back found Clayton relies on predatory sales practices. Okay, before we go any further, when they're, the loan that they're talking about is a chattel loan. But if you are reselling or purchasing a manufactured home that's already attached to a piece of property, you can use an FHA, VA, RD, and even a conventional loan. All of those are regular standard loans, just like you would buy a, a stick built home or a modular home, you can buy a manufactured home, a resold manufactured home with those particular loans. Again, they have to be attached to the land. They have to meet certain specifications, but there's many loans that they can qualify for and you won't be stuck in these predatory loans. Investigation a few years back found Clayton relies on predatory sales practices, exorbitant fees and interest rates that, that can exceed 15% trapping many buyers in loans they can't afford. And that's a problem. This is what I'm gonna be telling you next. I don't want you to get a loan at the dealership. I know a lot of people are gonna be really ticked off at me, especially in the manufactured home industry. But when it comes to getting your loan, I want you to actually go to outside the dealership. Do not walk in like you would when you're buying a car and go to the back to the finance department. I want you to go to your local credit union, your local bank, find anybody else that will finance your manufactured home outside the dealership itself. So that way you can roll your manufactured home and your land all into one. And that way, if in a few years you wanna sell it, it's all together. And that way you have a non-predatory loan. These loan packages that they offer a lot of times have exorbitant interest rates. And I totally agree with them, but there is a way to do this without having to have this happen to you. And now we're gonna to get to the part where I totally agree with John Oliver. And he explains it very well, probably better than I could. So let's go ahead and take a listen. But, but one of the biggest problems here isn't even to do with how you pay for a mobile home or how quickly it loses its value. It's where you put it. Because around a third of mobile home dwellers own their homes, but don't own the land underneath it. So that's because they live in mobile home parks and pay rent on that land to the park owner. But in recent years, large investors have been snatching those parks up and either tearing them down or ratcheting up rent and fees. And the fees that they have been attaching to manufactured home parks is astronomical and to the point where it's unaffordable. And they're trying to get people to either move out of the park or they're trying to foreclose on them because they know that they can't move the manufactured home in a later date. And this is where it gets really sad. This woman explains it. 
mobile, they call them mobile homes, it would cost 20000 to move this home out of here. Plus, it, when, once you move them in and they settle, moving them out is going to help destroy them. Not only will moving them not, I don't know if they'll actually destroy them. I've seen them be moved before and they've been fine. But the problem is, is if you have a loan like an FHA, a VA, or a conventional loan, you're not going to be able to move your manufactured home because it actually puts your loan in default. You can't do that. It says it in the paperwork. So if you have one of these loans and you are planning on moving it at a later date, that's not going to happen unless somebody is to buy out your property outright. It's meant to stay in place. When you think of a manufactured home, it's just that it's manufactured. It means that it came off of a plant, it was built in a plant, and they put it in place never to be intended to move again. That is a permanent dwelling. And just like if you were to get a home loan on a FHA, VA, or a conventional loan, it clearly states that it's never to be moved again. And they ask you to take off the things that actually make it mobile, which is the tongue and the axle. That is never meant to be moved ever again. So again, that's another reason not to put them in a park. She's right. It can cost thousands of dollars to move mobile homes if you can move them at all. That is why 80% of mobile homes never move. So the average cost to move a manufactured home, you're gonna to have to depend on your area. It's gonna cost you about this amount of money. And it depends, of course, of how far you're gonna be moving and the weight of your manufactured home. So if you're thinking about doing that in the future and you're not planning on getting a loan that requires it to stay in place, always think of these costs ahead of time. And just know there is gonna cost some wear and tear when you go ahead and set up your manufactured home at another location. This, this lack of mobility for tenants is actually part of the attraction for big investors. And to see just how cynical and predatory the industry can be, meet Frank Rolf. His company is one of the largest park operators in the US, controlling over 30,000 home sites in 25 states. So if you really want to meet or know more about Frank Rolf, this man is probably the most notorious predatory park owner that you'll ever meet. He actually even has a university on how he can make more money off of people when they're renting out pieces of land. He actually shows people how to do this type of predatory investing towards people that he knows can't afford to buy the piece of land underneath. The guy's a jerk. He makes a lot of money and he'll show you how to invest, but at the end of the day, you're probably not gonna feel really great about yourself if you do this to people. So don't take my word from it. Let's go ahead and take a listen to what Frank Rolf has to say about how to invest in manufactured home communities because it's really cute. Not. And again, just as a heartless person, is that you know the, 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 the customers are stuck there. They don't have any option. They can't afford to move the trailer. They don't have three grand. So they're, the only way they can, they can object to your rent raise is to walk off and leave the trailer in which case it becomes abandoned property and you recycle it, put another person in it. So you really hold all the cards. So the question is, what do you want to do? How, how high do you want to go? Wow. So he's counting on the fact that if you have a manufactured home in his one of his communities, he knows he's going to raise the rent on the piece of property to the point where you're going to have to move out. And he's counting on the fact that someone else is going to move back in. And they'll probably either A, rent that piece of property or B, buy the manufactured home and then the system starts all over again where they bought the manufactured home with a predatory type of loan and they're renting the land underneath. Again, he's gonna keep raising those rents and then somebody else is gonna come in. This is a terrible way to treat people People that are looking for affordable housing solutions. So when I was watching this and I was like, well, what can a homeowner do if they're in a manufactured home park and it's owned by a small company? Is there a way that maybe they, they can either get out of these loans or is there another solution to the problem? And that is when John Oliver went ahead and explained how communities can work together. So I'm gonna go ahead and list all the resources that he mentions in this next clip and it will be in the description. Well, one potential solution is for residents to band together and buy their own park, keeping it out of the hands of speculators or developers. And while that sounds inherently like a long shot, there are nonprofit groups that have had real success in helping tenants get financing to do just that. What would help 
is to have laws in every state that give residents the right of first refusal and time to raise funds if the current owner plans to sell. But until laws... The right of first refusal is not just in manufactured home parks. It's actually in regular real estate transactions all the time. So this would give a great option for anybody that wants to work with their whole entire community to go ahead and buy out the park. So that way everybody in the community can own the piece of land and the manufactured home that they live on. And in that case, in the future, if they do have a predatory loan, they can go ahead and refinance and get themselves an F FHA, a VA, or a conventional loan. There are some key things to bear in mind. If you want to rent a mobile home, that's fine. If you can afford to buy one and put it on land that you own, that's fine. But buying a mobile home and renting the land underneath it can be financially catastrophic. And it is very important that anyone considering doing that knows the risks involved. And I'll tell you what would have been helpful all along. If the marketing for these homes had always made those risks completely clear. And I can agree with you more, Mr. John Oliver. And I know that a lot of people are going to have their own opinions about this. But when they are advertising these on any website, it can be super confusing. Not only that, I don't believe, and I think the industry needs to change, where they shouldn't be allowed to finance the manufactured homes on the location itself. So what do you think? Is John Oliver right on all points? What is your opinion about manufactured homes? Let me know in the comment section. My name is Christina Smallhorn, your real estate whisperer, and I tell you all this because you matter.